Mother, are post-40% bran flakes really the best-tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed of Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's largest-selling brand flakes, Post 40% brand flakes, and by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. Remember the old story about the tourist who stopped to ask a farmer what route he should take to reach a certain village? The farmer said, well, you go down the road about a mile, turn left at the schoolhouse. No, that's not right. You go down the road to the gas station, veer right and... No, that's wrong. You go about two miles east and swing left and... No, that's not it. The tourist says, look, which way do I go? And the farmer says, sorry, stranger, you can't get there from here. (laughs) Well, if you think that's far-fetched, listen to events as they shape up in the white frame house on Maple Street this evening. Jim Anderson starts it with a casual and perfectly innocent remark. Like this. By the way, Margaret, I've got to run over to Beaver Falls tonight. Got some business to take care of there tomorrow. Oh? How long will you be gone? Well, I'll be back tomorrow night. Oh. Do you need any clothes pressed or anything? No, I'll just take a clean shirt, an extra pair of socks. Oh. Well, I'd better hurry dinner along. What time do you leave? Uh, I think the train pulls out at 8.40. Oh, well, you'll have plenty of time then. Yes, that's right, 8.40. Say, Mom, uh, do you know where my other tennis shoe... Oh, hi, Dad. You home? (laughs) Well, I hate to make rash statements, but I would say yes. Dad, uh, could you come over to the YMCA hobby show tonight? Well, I'm afraid not tonight, bud. Oh, come on. I I got a keen exhibit in it. I might win a prize. What kind of an exhibit have you got? I didn't even know you had a hobby. Well, I just started the hobby so I'd have something to get up and exhibit with. It's a collection of pits. Of what? Pits. You know, peach pits, apricot pits, olive pits. (laughs) Uh, I got all different sizes and all that. That Sounds like a great hobby. I'm surprised more boys haven't taken it up. Well, that's why I picked it. I wanted something where I wouldn't have any competition. (laughs) Well, you found it. So that's what's been happening to the olives around here. Well, I gotta get my pits in some place. But you mustn't waste fruit. It's not a waste, it's an investment. I might win a blue ribbon. Well, we can't eat blue ribbons. Oh, you don't understand about these things, Mom. (laughs) I'm sure I don't. How about it, Dad? Can you come down tonight? Well, I can't, bud. You see... Oh, just come down for a while. You ought to see how I've got them sanded down and polished up. Well, I hate to miss that, but I've got to go out of town tonight, leaving for Beaver Falls at 8.40. Well, the hobby show starts at 7.30. You can stop there and see it before you leave. Well, I imagine that by the time we're through dinner and I get a few things packed... Hey, I tell you what, Dad. You come to the hobby show with me and I'll go to Beaver Falls with you. Oh, you wouldn't enjoy it, bud. This is strictly a business trip. I'd enjoy it. I've never been to Beaver Falls. Well, at least not since I was a kid. How about it, Dad? Bud, don't heckle your father. He's got enough on his mind without having to bother with you. Mommy! Heck, I wouldn't be any bother. It would just take me a few minutes to get ready. Uh, How long will we be gone, Dad? What's this? Where are you going? They're not going anywhere. At least Bud isn't. I want to go, too. It's just a business trip that Daddy's taking, that's all. I'll be back tomorrow night. Will you send me a postcard, Daddy? I'll be there and back before a postcard could even get started. (laughs) How about some dinner, Margaret? Oh, yes. I guess I'd better get that started. What time did you say your train leaves? It leaves at 8.40, but I'd better leave the house by at least 8. Maybe you could drive me to the station. Oh, certainly. Can I go along, Mommy? Just to the station, I mean. If you're a good little girl and help me with the dinner. Okay. I sure wish I'd go on that trip, though. I've never taken a trip on a train, Daddy. Well, maybe we can all take a nice, long train trip sometime, kitten. When? Oh, I don't know. Next summer, maybe. What date next summer? I don't know exactly. I can't tell that till summer gets here. Kathy, you come with me and don't bother your father. He has to go upstairs and pack. 
Will you need any help with your packing, Jim? Oh, no, no, that won't take a second. Just toss a shirt in a bag. That's all there is to that. Mother, can we have dinner early tonight? I want to go... Oh, hello, Father. Hello, Princess. Hey, Betty, Daddy's going away on a big trip. Oh, really, Father? Where are you going? It's not a big trip. It's just a little business trip, that's all. I just have to run over to Beaver Falls. Oh, is Mother going with you? Why, no. Oh. Well, my goodness, Betty, you sound disappointed that I'm not going. You trying to get rid of me? No, I just thought it would be nice if you could go along. You don't get to go on hardly any trips. Oh, yes, I do. And besides, this is just a business trip. You know, I never thought about you going along, Margaret. Would you like to go? Oh, no, of course not. I'd like to go. Can I, Dad? <laughs> Mommy said you couldn't go. Who asked you anything, Shrimp? Ah, oh, turn blue. <laughs> All right, children. You want your father to carry a pleasant memory of you to Beaver Falls, don't you? Mother, why don't you go with Father? I think it would be nice. Oh, I'm not ready. And there's no time to get ready now. The train leaves at 8.40. All you have to do is throw a dress in with my shirt and we're off. <laughs> well, I, I really don't have anything to wear. Nothing except a closet full of clothes. Anyway, who's going to see you in Beaver Falls? No, I guess you're right. But I can't very well go away and leave the children. Well, Betty will be here, and Bud's old enough to take care of himself. Well, I won't be here this evening. Ralph's going to take me bowling tonight. That's why I want to eat early. Bowling? You don't know how to bowl. I know it, but Ralph is going to teach me. Oh, brother, that I'd like to see. All right, Smarty, I can learn to bowl just as well as anyone. I'd hate to be the pin boy in your alley. <laughs> <laughs> or in the next alleys. They're taking their life in their hands. Oh, you hush up. Jim, you'd better get upstairs and start packing. Well, how about you, Margaret? Oh, I can't go, especially if Betty's going to be gone tonight. Why can't you get a sitter for Kathy? I don't want a sitter. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. It's all settled. I'm not going. Come on, girls, you can help me in the kitchen. All right. Jim, if you want to take your new pajamas, they're in the lower left-hand drawer. I'll find them. You know, Kathy, I think you're kind of selfish. Well, if you'd be willing to have a sitter stay here, why, then Mother could go on that trip. Oh, now, forget it, Betty. I don't really want to go. Which one of you wants to set the table? Let Kathy do it. Hey, I got an idea that's better than the sitter idea. Take me along. <laughs> well... I guess that is a possibility. I've never been on a train before. Hey, wait a minute. I heard that. If anyone's going with Dad, I am. I asked him first. Well, I don't think anyone is going with him. Besides, you have to stay here for the hobby show, don't you? I don't have to. Well, we can't all go away and leave Betty here alone anyway. I still think you ought to go some way, Mother. Well, it's not really enough of a trip to make all this fuss over. Say, Margaret. Yes, dear. Where's that little uh, travel bag of mine? Which one do you mean? You know, the tan leather one. The office gave it to me for Christmas a couple of years ago. Oh. Well, that's kind of small, isn't it? It's all I need. Just room enough for a shirt and some papers. You really should take along some warm clothes in case it starts raining or turns cold again. <sighs> Margaret, I'm only going to Beaver Falls, not Alaska. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow night. Daddy? Yes, kitten? We got a new plan. New plan for what? The trip. Mommy said I could go along with her and you. My, Kathy, I didn't say that. You said it was a possibility. Well, I guess we could take Kathy. I ought to know right away, though, so I could make some more reservations. Well, just forget it, Jim. I couldn't get her ready in time. Wouldn't take any time, Mommy. Just throw an old shirt in a bag. <laughs> I don't see why she gets to go and I don't. Well, none of us are going, bud. Your father would be busy over there and we wouldn't get to do anything anyway. Well, I will be pretty busy, but... Oh, uh, no, Jim, just forget it. Maybe we can all plan a big trip for later on, sometime when I won't have to do any work. Well, that's a much better idea. I think that bag is on the shelf in Bud's room. Seems like that's where I saw it last. Uh-oh. What's the matter with you? I just remembered where that bag is. At the hobby show. The hobby show? Yeah. I carried my pit collection down there. <laughs> oh, fine. Well, there are other bags upstairs, Jim. I think you need something larger than that anyway. Yeah. 
You'll need to take a good big one if we're going along. Well, if she's going along, I'll get the phone. Well, what do you say, Margaret? Do you want to go or don't you? Oh, I... Certainly she wants to go. Mother, you go upstairs and start packing. I'll finish getting dinner. Okay, that's settled. Come on, Margaret. Whoopee! The phone's for you, Betty. Well... Oh, all right. Well, come on, Margaret. If you're going to get ready, you can't just stand there. The train leaves at 8.40. I know. Well, I don't like to go away and leave Betty and Bud here. They're perfectly capable of taking care of themselves. Yeah, we'll get along all right, but I still don't see why Kathy gets to go, and I... Oh, that Ralph. What's the matter now, Princess? Oh, he's invited George and Edna to go along. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing, except Edna thinks she's such an utterly, utterly great bowler. She'll be showing off all evening long. I can just see her. (laughs) Well, I wouldn't worry about that. Well, we'd better get our plan set, Margaret. It's getting late. Shall I get a reservation for three? Yes. Uh, Well, he wasn't asking you, Kathy. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's all settled. (laughs) I'll go upstairs and start packing. Well, how about it, Margaret? Well, Betty, will you be all right here? I guess so. If you want to leave Kathy here, I'll stay home. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do that. Well, I don't want to go down to that old bowling alley and watch that Edna show off. Well, hey, if Kathy's not going, how about me going in her place? (laughs) Who says I'm not going? Well, now, wait a minute here. I believe I've got a plan. Edna showing off wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the way Ralph and George get taken in by it. I can just hear those two ghouls raving and drooling every time she makes a shot. Well, Betty, may I... Why are men so gullible, especially Ralph? Well, Betty... Oh, what a beautiful shot. Oh, how graceful she is. Oh, what form. Ha, you ought to see her form. (laughs) Betty, if you'll relax for one second, I have a plan that might solve all our problems. Does anybody want to hear it? Oh, certainly. What is it, dear? Let's all go on the trip. Now you're talking... Oh, boy! That'll give Betty an excuse not to go bowling. What? And let Edna have both George and Ralph all to herself? (laughs) Oh, me. Well, I don't care. Let her have them. What time are we leaving? 8.40. Gee, we'd better start packing then. What about dinner? Don't fix anything. We'll eat on the way to the station. Well, I guess it's all settled then. Yes, and thank goodness it is. Come on, kids, everybody upstairs. Time waits for no man, not even an Anderson. Well, it looks as if Father's simple little business trip is starting to collect a whole busload full of eager passengers. And Mother, talking about eager people, if you want to see the family smile at breakfast, listen to this. Yes, life is swell when you feel well. And many women serve Bran with its important keep regular benefits for this reason. Uh, Maybe you've served it to the family for breakfast in the past, but found they didn't particularly care for the flavor. Well, try it again now, because something wonderful has happened to Bran. Today's post-40% Bran Flakes have a marvelous new flavor, a magic oven flavor an extra crisp texture that's simply delicious. And because of this better flavor plus better texture, more and more people tell us they now like post Bran Flakes better than any other cereal. So when you serve new post Bran Flakes, you're sure that your family is getting their ounce of prevention, their keep regular benefits in a cereal that tastes good, a cereal that's thoroughly enjoyable to eat. Mother, I hope that this simple story makes you decide to try post-40% Bran Flakes in your home. For goodness sake, eat post-Bran Flakes. So good and so good for you. So this weekend, when you do your shopping, remember, post-40% Bran Flakes are America's largest selling Bran Flakes. Try them. They're good and so good for you. Well, Jim's little business trip to Beaver Falls has turned into quite an expedition. It took considerable maneuvering, but the way things stand now, the whole family is going, which seems to be all right with Jim. In fact, he's fallen in with the spirit of the occasion, and the preparations for the journey have taken on a definite holiday mood. 
like this. Margaret! I'm upstairs, dear. Why don't you pack my slacks and sport jacket? We'll call the Bradleys tomorrow afternoon over in Beaver Falls. Maybe go out to the club or something. I thought you had work to do. Well, I'll try to finish up early. Now, what's the plan, Father? We catch the train at 8.40. What time do we get into Beaver Falls? I don't know. Early tomorrow morning. We'll have to go to a hotel, I guess. Give us a chance to freshen up. Why don't I phone Mildred Goodson? She lives in Beaver Falls, and they have a big house. She'd love to have us come there. No, Princess. Let's not complicate this any more than it is. All I'm doing is making a little business trip. Your mother and I may see a couple of friends while we're there, but... Well, I'm not complicating it, Father. I just thought it might be easier than going to a hotel. Well, thank you, Princess. But everything's all right, just as it is. Anybody using the phone? What an utterly dumb question. The receiver is hung up. Father and I are carrying on a conversation, and you ask if we're using the phone. I just asked. <laughs> I gotta call Joe. Tell him we're going to Beaver Falls. Hello, Joe. Bud. Mommy, can I take my doll? She's upstairs, kitten. Yeah, well, I can't go to the hobby show tonight. I'm, I'm going to Beaver Falls on the train with my dad. Yeah, the whole family's gone. Don't hang on the phone all night. I want to call Ralph. Uh, just a minute, Joe. I'll ask him. Hey, Dad, can I take a couple of Joe's pigeons with this? <laughs> pigeons? Oh, grown. He, he's got a couple of new homing pigeons, and he wants to know if we could take them with us to Beaver Falls. But we can't carry pigeons on the train. It'd only be a one-way trip. They'd fly back. <laughs> Joe says they need a good trip. No pigeons. Of all the dumb ideas. My dad says no pigeons. Dear, do you remember where we put that picture Uncle Fred gave us? Well, I think it's in the basement. Why? Well, I promised Mother two years ago that I'd give it to Aunt Sylvia. Okay, And sure. I thought since we'll be in Beaver Falls, it's only about 12 miles over to Atherton, we could take the picture over to Aunt Sylvia. Okay, see you later, Joe. But, honey, we won't have the car. Yeah, I will, Joe. So long. Joe says to give his regards to Beaver Falls. Well, don't sit there, stupid. I want to use the phone. We have to leave in a couple of minutes if we're going to catch the train at 8.40. Yes, we can sort of get organized, Margaret. No pictures, no pigeons. Can we just lock up the house and drive quietly to the depot? All I wanted to do in the beginning was take a simple little business trip. Oh, certainly we can go, dear. I just thought that since we were... Well, that's for me. I'll answer it. Hello? Oh, just a minute. It's for you, Father, long hmm? distance. Now what? Hello? This is Jim Anderson. Who's calling from Greendale? Hello? Well, operator, you'll have to complete the call in the next few minutes. I'm leaving it. All right. What happened, Dad? Oh, somebody calling me from Greendale, and they lost the connection. They're going to call back. Let's get all our things together anyway. Well, I have everything here in the living room, dear. I wonder if I should call around. Where's Kathy? I'm upstairs packing my doll clothes. I was just wondering, dear, if it wouldn't be easier to take the car. That way, we, we could take the picture to Aunt Sylvia. Well, I suppose we could. If we took the car, I could load Joe's pigeons in the trunk. <laughs> I'm not going to ride with a load of pigeons. Look, all I want to do is get to Beaver Falls. <laughs> I have an appointment in the morning with Mr. Patterson, our national manager. That has to be for me. I'll get it. If we took the car, we could be back tomorrow evening. The train wouldn't get us in until the next morning. Well, honey, does it make any difference? Well, I, I promised I'd make some phone calls for the PTA tomorrow night, and I really should do it. It's for you, bud, in the den. I'll take it on the extension in the kitchen. Father, if we take the car, I'll simply have to drive over and see Mildred while we're in Beaver Falls. Well, Betty, we're going over to Atherton to Aunt Sylvia's. Why can't you drop me off at Mildred's and pick me up on your way back? Look, ladies, I'm going on a business trip. I have an appointment with Patterson. Well, Mother and I could drop you off for your appointment, and then Mother could drop me off at Mildred's. This is beginning to sound like Operation Haylift. <laughs> could we just go? That was Joe. What was? On the phone. He says never mind about the pigeons. We weren't going to take the pigeons in the first place. He says there are a lot of hawks between here and Beaver Falls. <laughs> he doesn't think he ought to take a chance with the pigeons. But you'd already told him we couldn't take them. He wants me to stop off in Shady Cove and pick up some gravel. Shady Cove? That's at least ten miles out of the way. They got some gravel there by the river. Great for pigeons. Listen, please, I'm going to Beaver Falls. If you all want to go with me, that's fine. It'll be a nice trip. But... I'm ready, Daddy. Oh, what 
in the world do you have there? The stuff I'm going to take. But, Kitten, you... My doll clothes, my doll bed, my nurse's kit, and my stove. Kitten, we can't take all those things on the train. I thought we were going in the car. You said we were going on the train. You can drop me off at Shady Cove. <laughs> Dear, you said it didn't make any difference, and if we don't take the car, we can't get up to Aunt Sylvia's. Your door, bud. Okay, okay. It seems such a shame if we're going to be in Beaver Falls, so close to Aunt Sylvia's, not to take the picture up to her. All right, we'll take the car. And Mother can leave me at Mildred's after we leave you at your appointment with Mr. Patterson. Then she can drop Bud off at Shady Cove. But I don't think we can do that, Betty. You shouldn't drive up to Atherton alone, honey. Well, why don't you come with me? I have an appointment with Patterson. Hey, Betty, Janie Liggett's here. Janie! Hi, Betty. Hello, Mrs. Anderson. Hello, Janie. Mr. Hello, Anderson. Janie. We were just getting ready to leave. We're going to Beaver Falls. Oh, that's cool green. My mom and dad have house guests. I thought I'd come over and crawl in with you tonight. Oh, darn. Janie, why don't you come with us? Oh, no. Well, uh... Betty, maybe Janie's mother doesn't... Oh, she won't mind. I'd have to be back tomorrow night, though. Oh, we can be back tomorrow night, can't we, Father? Well, Princess... Do I have to ride in the car with a lot of girls? You don't have to go at all. I'll put my things in the car, Daddy. Now, wait, kitten. We can't all go in the car. Let's you and I go on the train, Dad. <laughs> mother and I and Janie and Kathy driving clear to Beaver Falls alone? No, we can't do that. Do you want to take the car, dear, and I'll take the girls on the train? Then I'll be driving all night. And I have to see Patterson first thing in the morning. Why don't you and Mother take the car and you can take turns driving? And Janie and Kathy and I and Bud will go on the train. I'm not going on the train. How am I going to get to Shady Cove? <laughs> Gee, I couldn't go on the train, Betty. I'm broke. I want to go with Mommy and Daddy. Well, I'm not going on the train alone. Well, we're all back in the car again. <laughs> we can't all go in the car, dear. You said that yourself. You know something, Margaret? We can't get to Beaver Falls. Why don't we all go on the train? We can lend Janie the fare. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. I'll go over and stay with Gloria. I won't go, Betty. There's a dance tomorrow night anyway. Golly, I'd forgotten about that. I don't think I'll go either. Holy cow. All right, all right. But let's please decide who's going and who's staying. To be perfectly honest, I shouldn't go either. What? Well, I remember I did tell Mrs. Phillips I'd help out at the candy booth at the carnival tomorrow. And somebody... Hey, is the carnival tomorrow? I thought it was next week. I'm gonna stay here. Me too. Does this mean that after all this arguing, everybody's staying at home... Well, you said it was a business trip, Father. We'd just be in the way. I didn't say that, but let it go. Well, where's my bag? The train leaves at 8.40. What time is it now? Creepers, it's five after nine. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you missed your train. What happened, Dad? What happened? Oh, I've got to call Beaver Falls, get a hold of Patterson, try to explain this somehow. Well, isn't there another train? Not till tomorrow morning. Oh, for... Pete's sake. Who left the phone off the hook here in the den? Who left the pot off the where? Bud didn't put it back after he talked to Joe in the kitchen. I didn't know it was off. Well, this is just one of those nights, I guess. Out of touch with the world. What if somebody tried to call? Dear, we could still drive to Beaver Falls tonight. No, that's out of the question. Now, if I can remember what hotel Patterson usually... Father, if that's Ralph... If this is Ralph, I'm going to... Hello? Is that you, Jim? Yes? This is Fred Patterson. Fred, I was just about to call you. Who is it, dear? Patterson. I've been trying to call you for nearly an hour. The operator kept telling me the line was out of order. What's the matter? You have a storm over there? Well, yes, it has been a little stormy. A lot of lightning, I suppose. Yes, uh, pretty windy, too. Uh, say, Fred... What I called about, uh, you said you were taking the 840 train for Beaver Falls. Yeah, well, something happened, Fred. You see, I was... Well, I was trying to get a hold of you before you got away. I thought I'd missed you. Yeah, well, I, I intended to... Don't uh... go to Beaver Falls. What? I'm not there. I'm still over here in Greendale. Got tied up here today. Jim, you still there? Uh, yes. Can you catch the train in the morning and uh, meet me over here? Why, why, sure, Fred. Uh, be there tomorrow afternoon. I'm sure glad I caught you. If you left for Beaver Falls tonight, you wouldn't have made connections at all. <laughs> <laughs> you still there, Jim? 
Yes, I'm still here. How did it happen you didn't leave on the 840 train? Well, I'm trying to figure out just how it did happen. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, Fred. Bye. Goodbye. Anything wrong? No, everything's fine. Good thing I didn't go to Beaver Falls. Patterson is in Greendale. I'll catch the train over there in the morning. Is there anything special you'll need? No, I'll just throw a couple of shirts in the bag. I just thought of something. I can't go to the dance tomorrow night. Ralph has to study for exams. Well, I imagine you'll find something else to do. Uh, uh, what are they going to have at the carnival this year, Mom? Oh, same things they had last year, I suppose. Why? I don't think I'll go. Well, I wouldn't either if I hadn't promised Mrs. Phillips to help. I suppose I could call Mrs. Liggett to take my place. Well, Margaret, uh... Mother, how long has it been since we saw Cousin Grace? Oh, at least three years. Where's she living now? Over in Greendale. Uh, <laughs> Father! Oh, no, not again. <laughs> And now before the final surprise of tonight's show, let's see what gives out in the kitchen. Honestly, Margaret, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Now, just relax, dear, and enjoy this nice cup of postum. Ah, now you're talking. Seems women folk just have a special knack of knowing what hits a spot when. Yes, sir, what better time for postum? Cheerful, hearty postum. Of course, just about any time is right for good taste in postum. It's caffeine free. No caffeine, no drugs. Nothing to upset you or your sleep. No wonder instant postum is a family favorite. You can drink all you want whenever you want. Let your family in on a real good thing. Get your jar of instant postum tomorrow. <laughs> Well, it's going to be interesting to see if Jim gets away on this trip to Greendale. It's the following morning in the white frame house on Maple Street, and Jim is standing in the doorway with his suitcase ready to leave. Like this. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon, Margaret. I could drive you to the station, dear. No, the cab will be here any minute. Have a good time, Daddy. Thank you, kitten, but this is just a business trip. Oh, there's the cab. <laughs> Goodbye, Father. Bye, Dad. It's just a business trip. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye, Daddy. Goodbye, kitten. Goodbye, princess. Goodbye, bud. Goodbye, Father. Bye, Dad. <laughs> uh, Margaret, what are you and the children going to do? Oh, I don't know. We'll find something to do. Bye, dear. Yeah. Well, bye, honey. <laughs> well, goodbye, kids. Goodbye, bye, Daddy. Bye. What a family. Well, pack the bags, Margaret. Let's all go. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Dorothy Lovett as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Janet Waldo. Mom, I think you're beautiful. Well, thank you, Johnny. You're the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Thank you, Johnny. Mom? Yes, Johnny? Can I have wheat meal for breakfast tomorrow? Sure, make him happy, Mom, with the best hot cereal anywhere. Post wheat meal is packed full of solid nourishment, great for kids, and so wonderfully delicious. Post wheat meal cooks in just three minutes. Try rich, hot post wheat meal with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post wheat meal, the best hot cereal you ever ate. <laughs> Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, enjoy Truth or Consequences on NBC.